What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Discovering Dez. My name is Dez and today I'm here with a review of Netflix's new movie, His House, directed by Remy Weeks, uh, starring Wumani Mosako as Real and Sophie Deshiro as Ball. But before we get into that review, I want to make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you can be one of the first people to know uh, when I upload a new video. And if you enjoy the review, make sure you share it out to friends who may also like it uh, and recommend this movie to them if they're into scary movies also. So you may be like, Des, what are you talking about? We are already in November. Spooky season is over. Halloween has passed. But no, I'm sorry to inform you, no. Spooky season does not stop with November 1st. I am one of those people, I will watch horror movies all year round just because it's something I love. People watch Christmas movies all year round. I choose to watch horror movies all year round just because it's something that I enjoy. I must say that this horror movie was a breath of fresh air. It provided some new perspectives and new ideas that a lot of people, including myself, may not have seen uh, presented in a horror movie uh, in the past. So we come to learn that our two stars, uh, Real, which is the woman, and Ball, which is the man, they are two Sudanese refugees who are applying for asylum uh, in England. They go through the process and they are assigned a house. Uh, long story short, the house is haunted. We come to see different things start happening around the house. We hear, we hear whispers, we see objects moving. Uh, they're physically hurt in some ways. They're being threatened. Um, it's important to note that at the beginning of this movie, uh, as they were venturing to England to seek asylum and they were fleeing Sudan, uh, they lost their daughter in the process. Uh, that's going to be a very key point in the movie, which is the daughter and what happened with her at sea and the whole refugee process. This movie is creepy. It's creepy. That's, that's the purest way to say it. it it's, there are little things hidden in the background, even though that, that's, it, that's obvious in a lot of scary movies, but this movie does a great transition between those loud scares and those small things that you have to pick up on in the background. But like I said, they are two Sudanese uh, refugees seeking, seeking asylum in England and they are approved and they are assigned a house. They have several rules regarding this house. Uh, they have check-ins weekly with I assume would be like the immigration people in England. Uh, they have a weekly allowance of 74 pounds. They are not allowed to work or supplement their income in any way. And they cannot move from their assigned home uh, under any circumstances, really. So those are all the things that they must keep in mind as they uh, start to acclimate to being refugees in another country. And it's important that last piece about them not being able to leave the house. Because a lot of times in horror movies, a lot of the watchers may ask, why don't they just get up and move? Why don't they go buy another house or rent something out? In this case, they are literally bind by law to this house and they cannot move given their status as asylum seekers. They're not official English citizens yet. They are still asylum seekers from Sudan. So the home that they're assigned, it, it's, in, it's in a kind of a sketchy place. I honestly say that if you had to equate anything in America to that, it would be like Section 8 or the projects, as some people would say. Uh, just uh, not the most well-kept uh, neighborhood, uh, not the most up-to-date uh, fixtures inside the apartment and whatnot. Uh, but overall, it is a house that they have to themselves. Uh, the immigration people know that they're lucky because uh, when other refugees come in, they're usually sharing their house uh, with numerous other people. But luckily for them, it's only them as a couple in the home, so they don't have to worry about sharing space and whatnot. Throughout the movie, you'll hear different things as far as assimilation and trying to fit in. 
uh, that's one of the very strong themes I found in this movie is like how they're trying to convince them to fit in and to try to be one of the good ones. And I just, that's an inherently racist statement in my mind because that makes the assumption that all black people are bad ones. So you have to prove yourself to be a good one. Uh, we see different things uh, come up throughout the movie uh, relating back to trying to just assimilate and get with the flow of what's going on in their new place. Dozens of times we see how the water impacts uh, the storyline of this movie. Like I said at the beginning, we learned that they lost their child as they were transitioning uh, over the sea uh, to England. And then uh, after they were assigned the house, uh, Rayal says uh, that they are born again. And that made me think about Christianity and how being born again means you have to uh, be baptized and be born again uh, in that sense of thing. So just another connection between that and the water. We'll see different imagery things with the water as we move forward uh, through the movie as well. So just like every other haunted house movie, we, we learn more about the house as they become more acclimated there. Uh, Ball begins to hear different sounds. Uh, Real hears them as well. Uh, and at a certain point, the wallpaper even begins to peel off of the walls. Uh, and it's, it, it exposes some not so beautiful uh, work on the walls as far as there's holes in the walls and just discoloration altogether. So, Ball eventually becomes obsessed with trying to figure out what's going on here. Uh, he tries to redo the electricity. Uh, there, there are certain vermin that are in the house that he's trying to deal with also, but he really becomes consumed with making the house his and trying to build it up to something to be proud of. Ball is taking that wallpaper and trying to fix up this new place. Uh, Real wakes up the next morning, he's gone and he's out on the town and she tries to clean up uh, some of the mess that he makes. And in the midst of that, she opens what I believe is a closet. And all of a sudden we see a light shining on her. Uh, and then it cuts to a scene where it's a flashlight being shown on the truck where all the refugees were. Just another thing that goes back to the acclimation piece and the assimilation. Uh, after Rayal visits the doctor, she comes back home and she fixes dinner for Ball. And it looks like it's set up in a traditional way uh, from Sudan where they're sitting on the floor uh, and they have their food and they're eating with their hands as they're accustomed. Um, but Ball seems to be really pushing her to use uh, silverware to make sure she sit, sits at the table. He's doing everything he can to fit in and be normal, but is met with some resistance from uh, Real. So Real goes on to tell a story about a man uh, from a village that she knew, and he was a thief. He would steal things to build up his own home, and one day he stole from an apeth, or what they call a witch. Uh, and thusly, the witch became a part of his house because whatever he took from her was cursed. Real says that whatever has been haunting them in their house is an apeth, and it follows them from what happened at sea. So that leads us as the watcher to question what really happened out there. Is it something that we don't know yet that happened? Why would an apeth be after them if they've never harmed anyone? What did they do to harm someone? Is it because they didn't get their daughter out of the sea? What happened for them to be latched on by this spirit or witch uh, to cause torment? And of course, Ball does not agree. He simply believes that she's losing her mind a little bit and there, there's no apeth that they are dealing with, even though he has been having some supernatural encounters uh, in the home. Ball gets the right idea to then burn everything that they brought from Sudan uh, to England. So he took their daughter's doll, he took all the clothes that they brought, he even took the necklace that uh, Rayal had 
taken from the doll's skirt. There was a beaded like pattern around the daughter's doll and she took that and began to wear it as a necklace. And one important thing that she said there was, don't leave me with nothing. And even after her telling him that in their native tongue, he still went ahead to snatch the necklace off and threw it in the fire. So that was a, just, I felt like there was a boundary cross there and that we reached a point of no return uh, in their relationship because we see that they care deeply for each other, but we start to see some tension between the two uh, individuals as the story progresses. Ball ends up going to the mall to pick up some new clothes. He sees an ad behind him and he legit buys himself the outfit from the ad and he buys uh, Rial, his wife, the same outfit, even though that is outside of their normal cultural wear. Uh, that they're both used to. This again goes back to the assimilation piece where he's doing his best to get them to fit in, whether it's how they eat, how they talk, uh, what they do, and how they dress. He wants them to fit in at whatever cost. He's really trying to move past what they experienced in South Sudan and really just create a new life in England and become an official citizen at some point. At, at a certain point, Ball ends up going to the immigration office and trying to see if there's any way possible that they can be transferred to a new home. But for that to happen, the immigration uh, officer says that they must uh, have a reason. But the reason that Ball provides is not necessarily sufficient. He says there's just really big mice and rats there. But the immigration officer informs him that they they will encounter those things no matter where they put them. And given Ball's just appearance and how he, he looks a little disheveled and just not all there, uh, they pretty much tell him that they were gonna be initiating a review to make sure that they're acclimating appropriately and keeping the house up. In an attempt to try to seem normal, it's like Ball starts laughing and just, he, he becomes detached in that moment. Like he's doing his best to stay grounded and relate and try to get his point across, but he, really detaches from reality in that moment. And he's so detached that he has a glass in his hand, a glass of orange juice, and he literally shatters the glass in his hand because he he just cannot control his body in the current moment. Long story short, Real and Ball are both offered different things uh, in exchange for Ball's life from the spirit. So to correct whatever wrong that they have done, they must sacrifice Ball to make it happen. All right, so I don't wanna tell any more of the story, so I'm just gonna stop right there as far as my recap, but I really want you all to go ahead and check this movie out. Uh, I left out some things intentionally just because I don't want it to be a spoiler-filled review. I hope I didn't spoil anything too much. Please let me know if I did, and even if I did, I don't really care. Um, it is what it is, it's a movie, you'll get over it. Uh, <laughs> But yes, please make sure you go check out His House on Netflix. It is a great, refreshing horror movie uh, that that's much needed. It, it shines a light on the issue of refugees, uh, what's happening in Sudan, uh, to a population of people in the horror genre that may not have uh, thought about it before or actually seen uh, such realistic current events be transferred over into uh, a horror movie. So that wraps up my review slash recommendation of His House. I would definitely give it a four out of five stars. Great movie, great actors, great special effects. They do a good job of keeping the suspense building. Uh, it's about an hour and a half long, so it's not a very long movie, and they do a really good job of using their time wisely and answering any questions uh, that the viewer may have as they're going through the movie. So go ahead and make sure you check it out. Uh, or make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, uh, and ring that notification bell. I appreciate you watching. You have a great day.